So here I am at Mount Beggary. So Mount Beggary is behind me and it is pretty much in that clearing. Uh, you either have to really rough bushwalk to actually get to the top of the peak and you won't be able to see anything because it's covered in dense vegetation. So this is the Humevale Formation. So you can see parts of the silt stone. So this is all silty and if you look at the geological maps uh, you can actually find fossils throughout this formation but obviously it's quite weathered and the only way you're going to get fossils is if they actually uh, renew this track so they need to clear it and expose the bedrock so this geological max about 50 years old and this track has, hasn't been um, cleared in quite a while so we're looking east here so if you look east there's a valley system down there so you can see the valley which if we zoom in see the mountain peaks in that way so there is a sinkline so the actual strata is dipping this way so a lot of it is dipping if I look at the geological map again so it is not much to see in order of geology here so I need to you need to go to the King Lake map. You need to go to the top of the King Lake map. So Mount Sugarloaf. So we'll pass there. We are uh, God. Okay, so where we are is so strike and dip on the geological map, uh, oh, maybe I'll just put a screenshot. It's about 58, 35, it depends on where you are. The strike and dip is uh, all different angles. So here it's about 10, 10 degrees. So you got 90, you got zero, 90, then you got about 10 degrees like that. And this place has been shortened, that means it's been compressed probably about 50 to 70 percent. So you could take a kilometer of rock, of so take a t 10 kilometer and it's shortened to between five and three kilometers. So that's how it's been compressed. Yeah, and as you go up the hill and you go down the hill again, uh, the anticline is that way. So so that's probably about two to three kilometers for the syncline to anticline. So that, that's quite a lot. And the dipping is a lot steeper, about 50, 60 degrees that way. And it gets shallower as you get to the syncline. So that's very interesting, as you can see. It has a lot of, uh, I think it's just iron bark forest. Uh, there's no koalas, I don't really hear any any birds. As you can hear it's quite windy. This was last burnt in 2009 and those were pretty bad bushfires that you can see a lot of trees are burnt. So uh, this mountain range used to be a lot higher, probably about three to four kilometers high. And what we're looking at here, so this is pretty much the root of the mountain range uh, that's been eroding. And if you know anything about geology, as this has been eroding, it's also been uplifted as the root of the mountain tries to come into equilibrium with the uh, with sea level. So this should still be rising. And that's probably why you get some earthquakes here uh, from the mountain mountain uh, chain actually eroding as well as probably uh, tectonic plates pushing from the south so this is heading no, that's heading east north is that way okay so how's this mountain range form so down south we had the uh, van 
D land, which about 300, uh, I think about between 500 and 300 million years accreted to the landmass. And that would have been something like a, it would have caused the mountain change to uh, uplift this uh, sea floor. So this is all laid down in the Silurian, which after the Silurian, we had the accretion, uh, which pushed the mountain range up. So I'm not too sure uh, about the geological activity that I'm, I need to read up on it to get a better knowledge. So as Van Dylan was pushing this way, it compressed the oceanic crust against the mainland, which is a uh, so this is the Bemamarian uh, orogeny. And the Delamarian was pretty much towards the west. So this landmass was pushing towards the north northeast uh, that way. So that's why we have a lot of uh, granites towards the north. Uh, because as the landmass was pushing, the ocean floor was being stretched so the crust was becoming thinner and that allowed the granite to actually intrude so I could be totally wrong about this but if anyone wants to correct me so all this is to interpretation so all this used to be ocean floor it used to be they call it turbidite so some of it might have been a oceanic uh, trench so where the actual crustal plate was dipping because this used to be a convergent plate boundary so that way was the mainland and there was a convergent plate boundary so I can't remember what the name of the plate boundary was so it was dipping so there should be a volcanic somewhere uh, but I don't know of any volcanics dating to the Silurian or the Visium age yeah, at this location or even even further towards Adelaide so that's my little uh, cheapo geology and as you can see the mountain range this is quite a beautiful place so this is just south of King Lake a lot of it is farmland but a lot of it like here is a uh, state forest or King Lake National Park as you can see, we've got some grass trees. These ones are dead. We've got these beautiful pink flowers. And we have, I don't know why these grass trees are dead here. Probably just, they don't look that old. This one's still alive. These ones have died. So it's a, a grouping here in which the grass trees actually passed away. And as you can see, they just fall apart. And this is only one alive one here. But if we go down that way, you can see there's some bigger ones that are alive. As you can see, These pink flowers, uh, they do die off quite big and they don't get, they're just a small tree, small bush. This one's probably 20, 30 years old. That's just a guess on the age. So we've got some bracken over there. Down here we have a valley in which there's a rock that's exploited by water. So over the past 250 million years this has all just been eroded. There was glacial uh, formations pretty much over here in the Permian. So pretty much since the Permian it's just been eroded. Uh, 
there are superficial deposits like there will be a quinternary uh, alluvial, colluvium and colluvial deposits down there. Wow, this is going to be a very bad video because it's going to, just going to be so windy. Anyway, so hopefully in the future I'll be making a video about how this mountain range actually formed. So that would be very interesting.